not get what he's saying right so this man made a great supper and then he invited many and then he sent his servants at supper time to say to them that were bidden come for all things are now ready and they all a all with one consent began to make excuses the first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have brought five yoke of oxen and I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife and I cannot come. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servants, Go out quickly into the streets. Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city and bring in hither the poor, the maimed, the halt, the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet hey, there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say unto you, that none of those men which were invited shall taste of my supper. Amen? Amen. 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 Can I be seated? None of those people that were invited, Deaconess, and didn't come, will taste of the supper of the Lord. So, like I said, I like how Jesus does his parables. Is you have to. John was telling me this morning. He said, "Those who have ears to hear, we should be hearing. We should be hearing." And yesterday, we and that were discussing the, the, the topic, and and, and and he said, he said, um, he said, "But Rev is is um, hard." He said because. It's been a little over a year that we've not been coming to church. So, I mean, if you've been doing the same thing over and over for a year, Pastor, it becomes like a habit. So I said, man, again, that is profound. God wants us to hear it so we are conscious of what we're dealing with. And it ain't easy. Because if for a year you haven't been coming to church, 
it'll take some getting used to, right? Because it, it's become almost like a practice if it's become habitual not to come to church. So, like Dorette was saying earlier, this COVID is, is nobody can tell me good things come from God and bad things don't come from God, right? Unless it's a part of his plan, and it could be. But I'm telling you, whatever it is, though, the devil is taking very good advantage of this situation with, with us having to be isolated and, and separated. He is loving it. I'm sure of it. So, it fits into what I want to say, right? That we need to get to the point, compel is a strong word, but that's the word the Bible used. And we could say, well, it's a translation, but look, that's what we have, right? In our book, compel them to come that my house may be filled i want to say that this day may 23rd 2021 i want to call on us to fulfill this command because this is not a suggestion it doesn't the tone of it began don't come across to me like a suggestion it comes across to me like a command Go out into the highways and the hedges, right? That means high and low. And then compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. And if you look around, this church has a lot of space. I, I don't know what day, what, what, June the 15th, I think, we'll, we could forgo the social distancing. So let's have a plan. We have like three weeks that every pew at least should have a person that means if we figure that out we need at least one two three four five six seven new people to come into this church by june 15. and that's with us not with us not coming back either with us here and then seven new people and at least every pew has one person look there's a bunch of us we could bring seven new people in three weeks that we could tell the Lord, hey, we tried, and at least we have every few have one person. You don't have to be every few have three, because they could hold like three, but at least one, John. Every few have one. Let's let's give it all we have. Have every few with one more person. Let's give it all we have. We'll ask who we need to ask. They'll insult us or tell us something funny or something stupid, but let's do it. And let's keep doing it. Let's keep doing it till they get tired of us. And block me like my nephew blocked me because he probably said you send me too much messages. He block I can't get through to that boy. The boy, the boy block me, right? So so the thing I don't understand with this world is like the governors, the, the, the politicians, the senators, everybody, city, county, state, the entire country seemingly is working hard to get all the restaurants filled up, all the bars, all the casinos. Am I right or, or wrong? Yeah. Everybody's trying to get all the restaurants, the bars, the hair salons, everything on the gyms, everything filled up. I don't hear nobody trying to get the church filled up. Right. But we understand. We understand. That's, that's how it'll always be done. Nobody cares about trying to get no church filled up. They're trying to get the bars filled up and it's playoff time. And this is when the money is generated. So that's what people's main concerns are. At least the people who leave. But we can't leave God's business undone. We have to pay attention to, to what God has called us to do. The Great Commission, right? Yeah. Spread the word, bring them in. We, it is our responsibility. Filling the church is our responsibility. I know God gives the increase. But somebody got the plant and somebody got the water. And that's us. God ain't gonna plant the water. He will give the increase. But we got to do the legwork. Amen? Amen? I think... This one is achievable. This one is achievable because God gives a lot of commands that come across harsh and hard and impossible to do. But not this one. We, we, we could fill the church. It ain't a big church. It's like if you say, oh, try to fill West Angeles, then that's a different thing. But this church, we could, we could certainly fill this church with us. We could fill this church. And then no limit it only to Belizeans. Right there, I remember Pastor had a peeve with that, as you know. As you know, Pastor had a peeve with that. So. No, exactly. exactly. It's a church of Christ. You understand, Deacon? It's not a Belizean church. It's a church of Christ. So, 
Let's start thinking more holistically, more comprehensively in terms of who will invite. Don't figure if they don't come from High Lane, they can't come to the church. No, they come from Memphis. They come from Alaska. They still come to the church. Amen? Amen. But I think this one is doable. And I'll, I, I, I'll, I'll tell you, is I, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, in any way trying to make it sound like um like it's trivial john jeff it, it, is that trivial i'm not trying to minimize the effort that it will take right because as i just told you guys even my own nephew blocked me right <laughs> yeah and then i'm the kind of person i'm sensitive like that i, I, I was I, I said what this leroy blocked me <laughs> <laughs> I'm like sensitive like that. <laughs> you know that? I'm not um I'm not used to it. And every week I invite people who I just assume would come. And they ain't coming. And then I'm tempted in my head. I said, alright, but when they never want something and they come ask me I feel you know, come to church. But then I said, No, God don't like it like that. If right, pray for them and someone in my mind, I'm so in and call and say, Oh, man, how could you please help me calculate calculate yourself? Because someone can invite you to church and come. But I it won't be of that mind, but I'm very tempted now. I'm very tempted. But Every week I invite a bunch of people and they don't show up. Like we could be chatting, right? We could be chatting. Hey, you know this Lakers got into the playoffs. Yeah, man, it's good. And it's good that it's not in church time. You could come to church today. Bam! No text. That last text. That last text. I, I checked the phone this morning and the man still not text me. I said, you be know, wife, your kids could come. Look at not a peep. Not a peep. People will text about Lakers and Nets all day, all night. In a minute, you said, Dirt, what? That's it. You don't hear a word. So, I understand. Some people, since I started texting them the messages they have, are not a people, not a word. So, I'm starting to get used to being completely ignored. I wasn't used to it. I was just about what happened. People have a friend. Sure. Completely ignored. So, I'm not saying it'll be easy, right? We, we know it is easy. We know it is easy. Even your mom, you can't convince to come. Even if you say, so that's a place only a mom could love, hey, that's a place not even a mom wants to come to. <laughs> I'll tell her she might love you, you go to prison, she'll go visit you in prison. I promise you that. Tanisha, if you go to prison, she will go visit you in the prison. But if you come to church, she ain't coming to no church. I don't understand what it is since and one of these days I probably will, but for right now we just gotta keep going at it. We just gotta keep going at it. Because God can only use who he has, right? Pastor explained the free will thing that you explained and he won't go against somebody's free will get. He will just work with who he has. And if we are all he has. Like this church, we are all he has. Some people missing like Carl missing, we know he be busy, but he has to work, work. God expect you to work. So if we understand that, but look, we are all, this church, we are all God has. He can't ask nobody else to bring in people to New Direction Christian. He only could ask us. We are all he has in this church. Amen? Amen. 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 The, thing, the thing with God that I like, though, is, like, sometimes we say, oh, when the devil bless, the devil bless. Yeah, the devil bless, but he take it back. I never heard of a devil worshiper that got blessed and then the devil knows. He always comes back for it. But not our God, not our God. No effort will go unrewarded with God. In Mark 10, 28, Peter began to say to Jesus, right as Jesus was talking about joining him, and Peter said, well, we have left all and have followed you. And I could imagine the tone. Listen to the tone. Because Jesus is talking about, and then Peter, I could, I could imagine the tone. Peter said, yeah, well, what are you talking about? We left everything and then followed you. Right? Think, think about the tone. And then Jesus had to answer him, the Bible says, and said, verily. Whenever you hear Jesus said, verily, it means absolutely. Verily, Jesus says, I say unto you, he 
he says, there is no man that hath left his house or his brothers or his sisters or his father or his mother or his wife or his children or his land for my sake, for Jesus' sake and the gospel's sake, but he shall receive a hundredfold no, no, in this no. time, no, Pastor, in this no. time, no. Yes. Houses and brethren, sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecution, yes. But he will also receive it in the world to come. In eternal life. Deacon, hey, that is a very, very serious promise that only God could make. Even Obama can make no promise like that. A bunch of things he couldn't deliver on even though he promised it over and over but when you see jesus says verily i tell you you will receive the reward a hundred times here on this earth and in the life to come we don't know what the reward is right because a lot of times like i said last week we start thinking is financial but it might be health it might be a tumor budding that you don't know, your doctor don't know, but if Jesus said, all right, let me cut that off, and you will never know that you get in front of him. And I said, when was that reward he promised me? And he said, oh, you had three polyps in your stomach and I took care of them, you don't even know. So we don't know, you understand? Because you might say, well, I'm not seeing it. Because as Janice just said this morning that she and her cousin were talking. And then when they reflected back, they realized, look where God has brought us from a hundredfold a hundredfold and it'll be a hundredfold more you understand what i'm saying so saints i want to concretize in your mind that there is a reward you are not doing this for not and it, what i like about him is a reward now and there's a reward later most people if you borrow six hundred dollars from me oh thank you right oh i appreciate it and then six months later, when you come back and I don't have it, they say, the damn dog, they forgot. Not Jesus. He remember it now, he will remember it later. We will get that reward. And I read it, the same thing from Matthew. Slightly different, and I like it. The disciples reward, the Bible calls it, right? Then Peter answered and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? You know, he, he, he don't care if it's God. He's bold. He doesn't well, what shall we get? Right? Sure. And for us these days, we don't put it like that. We say, well, um, um, oh, Janet, the Janet Jackson song say, what have you done for me lately? Yeah, that's how we ask it. What have you done for me lately? And Jesus said unto them, verily I say unto you, that you which have followed me, in the regeneration when the son of man shall sit in the throne of his glory you also shall sit upon 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of israel again that is a big thing for those 12s to be with jesus judging the tribes of israel hey if god look on this earth you know how hard it is to become a judge and then to become a judge in heaven, hey, it is a reward indeed. And he said, everyone that has forsaken houses, hey, it would be hard for me to give up a house, I'm telling you. Hey, a house takes 30 years to own, and it's blood and sweat and tears, you got to give it up? Well, he said, everyone that has forsaken houses, brethren, I'll forsake my brother only when he asks for too much money and then I don't want to waste it. I'll forsake him for that. But to forsake my brother if he's in trouble, it'd be tough. Sisters, father, mother, my wife. I get like standing and say, not my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Children, lands. Hey, Jesus said, you will receive a hundredfold and you shall inherit everlasting life everlasting life I understand that there is so much peer pressure that we're dealing with right peer pressure that we're dealing with 
And all of us are under tremendous pressure to conform. Conform. We're under tremendous pressure to conform, right? Because every medium that our mind is tuned into is almost in unison. I used to always tell the right, I wonder if who won CNN, call who won MSNBC, and they call and they call each other and say, this is what we we'll talk about today. It is, it is, it is, it is uncanny how congruous the media is. It is uncanny. The only thing like you have news marks and facts and then that's still on Trump's dead wagon. But <laughs> except for that fringe, right? It's amazing to me, Ganesha, how all of them have one congruent message. Is is the radio? Is the news? All of them. It, it is uncanny, Pastor. But because we don't have control, like as much control, because yeah, you could lock into TBN, but even TBN straight, right? I'm just telling you what this is. My opinion now. This is not biblical. Even they straight, right? And even if you listen to Christian music elements of the world creep into it look for us john it is just so difficult it is so difficult to ward away the unwanted i love the conspiracy he always said lord and charge it to my to my head and not to my heart you always say and and then take out what is not of you that's in me right because they can even the minute you see or hear something is in you you can't stop it you could control it you could manage it but the minute you see and hear it that's why there's that thing she no evil here but it is almost next to impossible so i will not be naive in thinking that this thing will be easy guys i understand it won't be easy right because we are under a lot of pressure to conform right and I want to touch on the young people, right? Because all of us, we are a little older, so we get the pressure still, right? Because if you have kids, and like, like Jewel, I'll pick on Jewel. Jewel have grown kids. She can't tell Leo what to do. She could talk all she wants. She can't beat Leo. You, you understand? She could just talk and talk. But while she's talking, they're putting the pressure back too. Because pressure, as you know, if you understand physics, energy just don't move one way. It comes back. Every action has a reaction. And they figure in their head, you try to ask me to go to church, I try to ask you to go to casino, or I try to ask you to do this. So it's a counter pressure. Pastor, it is hard. It is hard. You putting pressure this way, the pressure will come back too. So we I understand all of us are under constant pressure. But Jewel, what we have to deal with is nothing compared to what these kids have to deal with. You imagine a middle schooler in America, the things they have to hear and the things they have to deal with, and then as they continue to grow, and you figure whether they're in university is old. Nah, it don't make no difference, they, get, they are under tremendous pressure. And if they get a boyfriend, then the boyfriend bring a different sort of pressure. So, look, I understand how hard this thing is. Everybody is under pressure, pressure. to conform, right? Everybody's under pressure to conform. All right, good. The thing with it is, for the kids, for us, like me, meh, middle 50s, mm, uh, yeah, hurt me for a little while, get sensitive, mm, curse them in my mind, and then <laughs> meh, forget them. Because my wife is right upstairs. <laughs> right? I just need to walk up like 16 flights of stairs and I can talk with my wife. But not for the kids, because for the kids, they're social and they're out. And then when they don't conform, they start getting isolated. Hey, what's up? And, and it's hard for the kids, right? Because God made us in a way, right? He even had to take a rib from Adam and made so he could have a companion. God made us so that we are socialized. That's how we thrive. And for them, that's what they're facing if they don't conform, right? And the thing is, I remember, man, I'm thinking about, I, I, I remember we used to hang out right there in front of the alley, like you figure, I used to think like, I can't live without seeing these guys. I haven't seen them devils for years, I ain't dead. You understand? But for the kids, they figure like they can't live without their friends, right? Like their friends form the core of their existence, right? So for them, Pastor, I'd say it is 
next to impossible for them to adequately to appropriately deal with the peer pressure that they are facing right but I want to emphasize that the church should always be counter culture Amen. if guys I'm telling you and Pastor Smith is sitting right there if you ever see us starting to bend and flow into the culture even Pastor Smith used to say this and Pastor Marsh used to say this say something Pastor did Pastor tell us if we start to move to say something she'd always say you could come to me Pastor Marsh used to say that you could come to me because, because she too was aware that we can't I mean there's like I always see there's a little wiggle room like God don't put us in straight jackets right that's why Jesus said is a freedom in serving God because God don't put us in a straight jacket the devil put you in a straight jacket he want you just always evil he don't want it mixed he want you always bad God gives room and that's why God has forgiveness the sacrament of penance the Catholics call it that's the wiggle room God gives you right God give us a wiggle room but for his bride he wants his bride, the body of Christ, to be pure. Amen. We should not be flowing with the culture. Saints, if you ever see us starting to not be counter culture, you call Pastor Smith. And you explain it to her. And I'm sure she'll listen and she'll debate, but she will acknowledge whatever it is that you are saying. We should never not be counter culture culture the Bible says that we are peculiar people a people will gaze at us and then they wonder like why <laughs> why why do you never study the Lord of the church why why because I see, see run and then after have to hurry change and then but I just have to rush why I'm sure if your kids were here what you said I understand my mom why it's a question that people would ask like why 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 Janice why so people should always be asking why if they are no longer asking why then we need to take a hard look at ourselves mm -hmm. Jeff why the zeal why the insistence mm -hmm. hey I'm telling you it's rain and sister Underwood maneuvering her way to get here to this place began mm -hmm. in December when it's cold 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 when we used to have the Thursday Bible study she be still coming uh, why? Why the zeal? Why the insistence, right? Don't lose it, saints. Regardless of what happens, don't lose it. Yeah. Don't lose it. Keep the zeal. Yeah. Keep the insistence, right? Yeah. So, we, we, we will be under a lot of pressure from our family members who are not where we are to quit. Right? Dul, you will be under a lot of pressure to quit. You will be. You you will not. You might not see it like that, but the pressure will be real. If you are discerning to it, you will be under a lot of pressure, right? Because even if the pressure is not overt, the pressure is not overt. They're not seeing it, right? But they won't encourage you, though. They won't encourage you. And Solomon said, you need one to help the other when the other one falls. You know what we need a lot of? We need a lot of affirmation, yeah. and we need a lot of encouragement, yes. and we need a lot of motivation. Yes. Amen. Hey, Deaconess, and if that's what you need to keep you standing and to keep you whole, then you're in some trouble. Why? Because you won't get it. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. If we are unequally yoked in that sense, right? I will if the unbelieving husband and the unbelieving wife but while they are turning right while the ship is turning while the ship is turning you are a bit isolated and the things that you need to prop you up and to keep you going in the Lord you will not get so I want to alert you guys to that when you're making a plan you have to anticipate what could go wrong and then you develop contingencies for those things that you have no control over and then you have a better plan a more flexible plan a more adaptable plan 
And this is a plan that we have, that in three weeks, we will bring seven million people to church. That is a plan. Yeah. Know that you will get no encouragement from anybody in that task. All right? All right. In fact, my note says that they will try to actively dissuade you and discourage you. Right? Whatever you bring, there will be a resistance. We were going through the Bible study with Moses, right? God said it, Moses said that. When God said it, Moses said that. The clean, whatever God told Moses, Moses could care less. He said, well, you know, not me, Lord. I get that. And then God said, well, I'll put you on. Well, they won't believe me. Well, tell them this. No, man. He, whatever God said, this is God of heaven, you know, talking to you and whatever God said, you will he resist it. It'll be the same thing with us. Whatever we say, they'll have a counter argument. They'll have a counter argument. But we won't we won't back down. So I'll introduce one psychological concept. Because as Jesus himself said, oh, one of the apostles said, if they wrote everything Jesus said and did in the Bible, there wouldn't be enough books in the world to hold them. It's just one book. This is the size, right? If 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 they start to put a little bit more, we wouldn't even be able to carry the book. So what I try to do is use the spirit of God in a manner of discernment to figure what man has discovered through the intelligence of God that blends in with what the Bible says, right? And then whenever it comes to me, I introduce it, and I want to introduce one of those concepts: the low cost of control it's called in psychology and that's why net give us things to take notes right if you don't take notes you'll forget the notes at least you could refer back to it all right don't forget not to take take notes don't seem bad so what i googled said the locus of control is the degree to which people believe that they as opposed to external forces beyond their influence have control over the outcome of events in their lives, right? Big words. All it is saying is that your locus of control refers to how much you think you have control or other things have control. That's all the locus of control is, right? And some guy, Julian B. Rotter, in 1954, was the first one that thought of it in this way. But since he came up with it, he's always taught in schools when it comes to personality, psychology, locus of control. So essentially, there are two locus of control. There's an internal locus of control. I'll put that on my right hand because God always put the good things on his right hand. And then there is a external locus of control right and the internal locus says i control my destiny and the external says others control my destiny right and i my kids are sitting right here if i'm lying i'm dying I tell them all the time you align your will with god's will right because there are many things that you can't control but while there are many things you can control, there are also many things you can control. Control those things that are in your control. You remember the serenity prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change. The courage to change the things I can. And then the wisdom to know the difference. Right? And with the internal locus of control, you tell yourself, well, I control my destiny. For us as Christians, they won't put that in their book, but for us as Christians, as it is in heaven, so it should be on earth, that our will aligns with God's will, and then you control it, all right? The outcomes, whatever occurs, are within your control, and they are determined by your hard work and your decision like it you know what the, 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 the psychology people say it is determined by hard work and by your decisions so 
understand what I'm saying, right? You can't control your destiny being lazy. You understand? And I tell the kids all the time, work is not a bad thing. Jesus said, my father works and I work. If God and Jesus work, there's nothing wrong with work. Hard work and then the decisions, you control your destiny. No. The people who have an external locus of control, so they are looking outside of themselves to control the things that impact them. What's their issue? They believe that others control their destiny. Dangerous. It is a dangerous act. Like in Belize, growing up, all of us grew up thinking, yeah, that the politicians control our destiny. If Jared Price don't give me a piece of land, I can't get a piece of land. If Said Musa don't fill my yard, my yard won't be full. If, if Francis don't give me a scholarship, I can't finish school. That's how we think in Belize, most people. Pastor, they have an external locus of control and it's thought, it's propagated, and it's cultivated, right? They have an external locus of control because they feel that others control their destiny. That the outcomes are outside of their control and they kind of leave it to luck or to faith. And they think it's independent of their hard work and their decisions. So I come before you now to say it's a spiritual, John, that you retain or if you don't have it you start changing your paradigm and then you internalize your locus of control because jesus wants all of us to have an abundant life you can't have an abundant life if you have an external locus of control why because nobody will take their money and give it to you you understand you think a billionaire is gonna take his billions and give it to you they became like that because they have an internal locus of control. You talk to people who are leaders and people who have affluence and influence. Listen to how they talk. They are not depending on somebody else to do what they... Hey, Trump, he run all things with everybody come in contact with him. We could say what we want, but he has an internal locus of control. I put it to you that I believe based on what I read that our God wants us to be the head Amen. pastor he don't want us to be the tail Hallelujah. what do you think the head is the head is an internal locus of control the tail get one so the tail is an external locus of control so I'm telling you it blends with what the Bible says if you want to have an abundant life you need to develop if you haven't an internal locus of control. Saints, I will read it again, that your efforts will not go unrewarded. I think it is so critical for, for us to leave here. That's the last thing I'll say, because I want that to stick in our minds, that when we leave here, we leave with the understanding that the things that we do for Christ will last. Gil, if you babysit the neighbor's kid because she got overtime and she needed to get the overtime to make more money, it is a good deed. Very good. God said, if you give them drink in my name, I will reward you for it. But still, all of the things you do for Christ will not be burned up on that altar in heaven. The things for Christ come with an eternal reward never forget them mark 10 peter began to say to him well we have left all and have followed you and jesus said verily i say unto you there is no man that has left his house or his brothers his sisters his father mother wife children lands for my sake and the gospel say that he will not receive a hundredfold now in this time houses brethren sisters mothers children's lands with persecutions he put that in there too so you understand it'll come with persecutions but you will also get it in the world to come eternal life he said saints i want to leave this firmly firmly entrenched in your minds clint that what we are doing every sunday what we are doing every thursday 
It might look trivial. It might look meaningless. But there's a God in heaven watching and a God in heaven waiting. And when we come before that God and have to answer for ourselves, those things, the God, Jesus, our abogado, our attorney, will say, Dad, remember when. Remember when. Those things will not burn up. He said, Matthew 19, 27, and Peter said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? I can imagine him all pompous telling Jesus, What will we get for leaving everything and coming and following you? And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that you which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, you also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone that had forsaken houses, or brethren, or sister, father, mother, is a long list, wife, children, lands, for my name's sake, shall receive an hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. Saints, go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that the house of Lord Jesus Christ may be filled. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So, I call a deacon, right? Because we understand the value of the sinner's prayers. Um, prayerfully, Gila gave us a testimony on Friday. She brought someone to the Christ, to Christ during the week. Because no man knows the time or the hour of deacon. And because we understand that we get life insurance, all of us have life insurance, right? But it's not better than an eternal life insurance. And this is how you get it. You don't have to send no deposit. You don't have to pay no premiums for this, right? All we need is the good news of salvation. And we need to turn our wills over to Jesus that he becomes our Lord and our Savior. And he can lead us in that exercise. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise God. If you've been... And for those who need healing in their body, I pray, Father God, touch them from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. Amen. Cover them with the precious blood of Jesus. Satan, take your hands off of God's property yes. and God's people. Amen. And for those who need deliverance in the name of Jesus, the Bible says, many are the afflictions of the right of the, um, many afflictions are of the righteous, okay. but the Lord delivers out of them all. And I, we claim that deliverance in the name of Jesus. Jesus. For those who need salvation, I just ask you to repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I know that I am a sinner. I believe you sent your son Jesus, who died on the cross for my sins. I repent of my sins. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Now, now and save me, and save me. Satan, Satan I come against you I come against you demons on assignment, demons on assignment against, me, against me and every demonic spirit and every demonic spirit thank you Jesus thank you Jesus for saving me for saving me if you said that and you meant it you are saved <laughs> And I want to say, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Yes. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, Amen. for God is love. Amen. Go in peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.